Hey guys, welcome along to Find for People. My name is Grant Goes, and this is the platform that helps you find the best in health, sports, and fitness. Uh, today we're going to talk about movement. Yep, what kind of movement? Well, you're about to find out straight after this. Hi guys, welcome to Find for People, the platform helps you connect with the best in health, sports, fitness, and today we're talking about movement with the man himself, Mr. Jonathan Clayton. Bro, welcome on to the show. <laughs> turn it on here, turn it on, brother. Turn it on. <laughs> you are on, you're like, it's a little silent Check us on. <laughs> it's all good. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, it's cool. We talked off air just beforehand and uh, we had a good chance to kind of relax. I know you're saying you, don't, you haven't done these before and you just... Getting into them and your yeah, first yeah, experience. My first podcast. You're a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> podcasting. Breaking the ice. That's the one. Um, we, we're just going to chat about different things. But we're, we're going to first of all, when we get into the movement side of it, but when we explain it, let's just find a bit about where you and you've been here in the UAE for a while. Um, yeah, I grew up here. I've been I've been in Dubai since uh, about 1986. Ah. Uh, so I spent pretty much my entire life here. Wow. Uh, went to nursery school here, primary school. Ah, yeah. Uh, I did a couple of years in England in the middle, and then I was back out here in English College to finish off secondary school, and then back over to the UK for university. Swish. And then back here to work. It's quite a common trait, though. A lot of people that are brought up here, they go away for some yeah. education, and they come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you get into when you, when you came back? And um, the plan was when I left was to go and do sports science as my university degree. Yep. Uh, just before leaving, I had an accident playing rugby, and I tore my ACL. You a scrum I was outside centre. Oh, well, awesome. Yeah, we were all around <laughs> the same height then. I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I ended up doing a business degree last minute and then I came back to Dubai and um, started working in, uh, in finance and yeah. wasn't my thing. I worked oh. in a bank. Uh, what made you go from sports science into to finance? Because uh, I just ended up doing any old business degree that I could. Yep. It wasn't really of interest to me. Uh, I couldn't go and do the sports science degree because it required like the first six months of a lot of physical activity, which I couldn't do. Ah, yeah, true. Because I was just going to have the surgery. Yeah. Um, so enough. it kind of stopped me from doing what I wanted to do. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then I came back here and I ended up working in a bank and I didn't like it. And I mm. thought like, okay, there's no point moving to another bank. So yeah, I ended yeah. up doing recruitment for financial services. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Stuck it out for two years. And whilst I was doing that, behind the scenes, I was literally behind the scenes <laughs> doing my, uh, my personal training course. Oh, wicked. Awesome. Yeah. So as soon as I... Was it online then or...? I did it online, yeah, yeah. with the Fitness Institute of Australia. Oh, wow. Awesome. My, my desk was positioned with a wall behind me. So actually in work, I was... Oh. Doing my, my <laughs> online studies. That's right. Can't find me now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as soon as I finished and I got my certificate, I literally resigned the following day. Oh, well, really awesome. Uh, and it was probably a big mistake because back then there wasn't, there wasn't much happening in the fitness scene here mm -hmm. in terms of like there was no CrossFit boxes. There was very few gyms mm -hmm. outside of hotels back yeah. then. Uh, and personal training was kind of relatively new and yeah. the biggest thing was all the boot camps mm -hmm. uh, that were running from I think like original fitness company. Ah yes, and there's an American something as well, uh, they, well they, they combined us. Yeah. yeah, so there was a few of those running and so it was a little bit rough to get going in the personal training industry but yeah. I started in in, uh, in that field uh, and that's how I met you. I yeah. think through one of the course, maybe a TRX course uh, or something. I think, like I was that, I think which one it was, yeah. yeah. I was like which course? Yeah. Yeah, it must kettlebell. Be a, kettlebell course, the, kettlebell? the squash court. And Jamira. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I yeah. know you were yeah, coaching that then. Yeah, and that was like how I kind of got back into the fitness industry through mm -hmm. the personal training. Um, yeah, and, and then from there, I kind of got involved in jujitsu, like on the personal side, and it was a, a love of mine at the time. Yeah. And um, I think like everybody in jujitsu, I had a few injuries. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are riddled with in injuries in jujitsu, not a lot, a lot of joint prep. Mm -hmm. uh, strength work didn't really take place in the classes mm -hmm. and so i went outside and i was researching like okay what can i do to supplement mm -hmm. my my jujitsu yeah to make sure i got mobility my joints are like not aching all the time i'm strong enough and doing the right strength work versus like 
what was familiar to me then was like a bodybuilding style of uh the machines the big weights yeah, yeah and it wasn't really going to help me in jiu-jitsu so i was researching like bodyweight stuff and that's mm -hmm. how i came across Ido portal mm -hmm. who's my teacher yeah and uh, things kind of unfolded from there yeah uh, and i remember seeing uh, a video of him uh, just doing some like really crazy stuff he was doing one-arm chin-ups bouncing on one arm, yeah. crazy acrobatics, moving around like close to the floor in ways I'd never seen before. And yeah. like, I'd never seen somebody have that skill set before, like totally. being able to do a bunch of different things. And I was kind of like a little bit captivated by it back then. Mm. Um, and doing all of my workshops and things like that back then, I was, okay, I'll get in touch with this guy and see if he's offering anything. Mm -hmm. Turns out he was in Israel, mm -hmm. couldn't travel there. Um, so it kind of like disappeared off my radar. And then uh, I figured out how to get to Israel. Oh, connections. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, can I message him? Yeah. And so I sent him a message and I got an email back saying he's not based there anymore. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> after all that, yeah. Yeah. That, so that was like a year and a half after okay. I had originally found him. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it kind of like fizzled out. And I just watched all of his videos on YouTube. Um, and... Yeah, from there. I was gonna say, it, 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 man, for, for a virgin, you're amazing. <laughs> you're great. <laughs> I was gonna say because like, um, so we, we're nearly at that point about the movement side of things, yeah. and, and which is obviously what our viewers are looking for. So I suppose we get to that point of can we explain movement to people and yeah. what it is? It's um, it's a, probably a difficult thing for people to wrap their head around at times because. We're all moving all of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like people ask, like, what's movement? It's like, well, we're, we're doing it right now. Like, even the heart's beating. It's, yeah, totally. And, like, I'm playing with my, my fingers right now. Yeah. Like, and toes are wiggling. Yeah, it's, yeah. everything's moving. <laughs> yeah. It's just a case of, like, how well each of us are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, Good point. And, you know, a lot of the elaborate uh, things that I'm doing, that my, that my teachers are doing, they're just stemming from, like, really basic patterns, like squatting, moving the spine, mm. throwing, running, jumping, um, air, folding the body. And those are kind of like even just walking. Mm -hmm. Those are like the foundation, like real, like basic, basic movement patterns that we're all supposed to be doing. Much better, yeah. And yeah, what we're doing is just a, on a higher level. Um, well, it's a good thing you ordered a video. <laughs> the video yeah. to share. Well, guys, we're going to talk about movement. Johnny's going to explain further and further into it so you understand best and how to get involved yourself. Uh, we're going to do that. But first, we've got a short video of Johnny himself expressing movement. So let's check that out. Now. Hey guys, welcome back to Vine for People, the platform that helps you connect with the best in health, sports, and fitness. We're talking with Jonathan Clayton about movement and what you've just seen is him move. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I can explain the video a little bit. Yes, this is going to be because it's like, <laughs> Yeah, so look, uh, what I'm trying to do for myself and for my students is create a movement practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and within the movement practice, we're tackling uh, different pillars. So just to give you some examples, there's like a tactical pillar expressive which is more dance orientated oh. um uh you have elements which is like dealing with uh, uh outdoor environments like parkour and that type mm -hmm. of thing because that's um, what a lot of people actually right when, when i first thought about it, that's what i related to was like oh parkour but like, obviously it's much more to it than yeah that. yeah and when you talk about these things like this is really cool because i've never actually heard this stuff well so i'm like yeah well, Tactical side. What is the tactical side? Tactical side? side is like martial, like based around martial arts. So, mm -hmm. so games that are incorporating um, footwork systems from various uh, martial art disciplines, mm -hmm. and also games um, that maybe replicate or are kind of like spin off of certain disciplines, mm -hmm. uh, where you're receiving a lot of information 
on that particular game, but maybe you're not receiving the trauma. So for example, like we have a game uh, called shoulder touch where we want to touch, you want to touch my shoulder, mm -hmm. I want to touch your shoulder, mm. but I don't want you to touch my shoulder oh, and yeah. you don't want me to touch your shoulder. Yeah. And within that game, we're both using various footwork systems. Mm. Yeah, we have wow. to have like fast feet, smart feet that can move in a variety of ways and totally. steps. Then we also have to have distance management, recognizing where I'm safe, where you're safe, where yeah. you're not safe. Also using the eyes, where am I looking and placing my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, different reactionary systems, like my arms need to be empty so that they can reach out and touch you. Mm -hmm. And I need to make sure that I'm in a distance to touch you as well. Yeah. So I have to like have all of this information downloaded mm. um, and I can get some of the benefits that I might receive from boxing without going to a boxing class Probably and without getting traumatized. Right? Yeah. And then there's some of those uh, pieces of information that will be useful in a dance scenario as well. I said it so <laughs> what we want to do is try and pick out all of the relevant bits of information from these different disciplines. Like, mm -hmm. so we kind of refer yeah. to the disciplines as, as uh, containers of information. Do you connect them together? Yeah, you can connect yeah. them together because people don't realize like in dance, you're rolling around on the floor in certain ways. Mm. Um, and you're also doing those same roles in jujitsu. Not true. Really. But because one person's doing jujitsu and the other person's doing dance, you don't realize how interconnected yeah, they are. Yeah, totally. So we're trying to pull all of those relevant bits together. And we mm. kind of, we uh, refer, refer to it as look, uh, getting the master keys, you know, because you can have a look uh, through the window yeah, yeah. or you can go in through the door and that door opens up a whole new world. Yeah, true. So we want to go and get Good the energy. master keys for all of those doors. Mm. Uh, because they will help us to go in a number of different environments and have a good idea of like what is required mm. in this situation. And that can be, a, it can be going into like one of the pillars in a movement practice or maybe I'm going to the climbing gym and I'm climbing and mm. I have to re like figure out how to problem solve on yeah. the wall. Or I could be learning something completely new like surfing and having my connection to the board and the board connecting to the wave and yeah. understanding how to balance, yeah, totally. how to position myself. Like, so we, there's, there's so much diversity and there's so much um, specificity in, within a monk. So when someone comes to you, oh, where do I begin? Where do, they, where do you begin with this? Um, so I've got people of all levels in my classes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Like I've got people that came from CrossFit and I've also got people that didn't do anything. Oh yeah. Oh. So they, they kind of roll into the class with whatever's happening at that particular time because I run projects and the projects will last from six to eight weeks. Okay. Um, and because movement is so big, mm. like there isn't a basics okay. in general. There's a basics depending on whatever project is being worked on. So when someone jumps into the class, they start on the basics of that particular project. And then outside of that, the body also needs to be capable to to do the things I'm asking them to do. Mm -hmm. So we have like strength work, mobility work, mm -hmm. and some hand balancing. Um, the strength work is, uh, the upper body work is mainly coming from like a gymnastics kind of background. Mm -hmm. And then you have hand balancing, which is uh, working in inversions. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, and general mobility work. Yeah, with the projects itself. So like, for example, uh, how would you set a project? Which is example being like, do people want to get Better at dance? Is that how you do it, or how, what, when you set a project, what is that exactly? A pro so I, an easy an example could be object manipulation, which is another pillar, mm -hmm. and uh, a project under there could be learning to juggle. Okay, I forgot to say. So you're juggling yeah, on this so video, juggling right? On the video, right? Yeah. And everybody has to start somewhere. Like it's not just okay, two balls and start juggling. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, so we give them a starting point, and like here's how we break things down. And mm -hmm. part of our role is to to teach people um, mm. how to do what we're asking them to do, and so. Yeah, we just break down the the material in each of the projects mm -hmm. and find the starting point for that particular thing yep. and get people going from there. Oh, work it. Um, you'd never expect anybody to jump in and be able to do the things we're doing. Yeah. And what we ask for is more of like a craftsman mentality where, okay, we're providing the education mm -hmm. and you have to work away and keep going, keep going, keep going, failing totally. until you fail to fail and yeah. then, then it comes along. Totally. Uh, it's not an environment where people can come in and just do something. Like I had somebody come into the gym the other day and they said, ah, oh, can I just borrow you for 10 minutes? You just need to tell me how to do a handstand. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That would be a common yeah. question though. In 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's like maybe in a year you'll get a handstand or six months you'll get a handstand, but it's yeah. not like a 10 minute thing. 
Everyone uh, these days wants everything in like a split second, don't they? Yeah. they want to... and people want people want everything right now, and yeah. that's not what we're trying to do. Like a lot of people are giving their keys away from their body to somebody else. Mm. Like you do all the work, but totally. what we're trying to do is give them back and provide you yeah. with the knowledge to like go into different uh, scenarios that require you to act in a certain way. Yeah, hundred um, percent. What's what's the difference between like when you like obviously you're going through that PT road and you've come out here. What was the differences you saw? Because there's, there's a lot of stigma with PT and the, the common, oh, I want to lose weight, I want to get big muscles, you know, that's what it always is. Um, and obviously you still want to get some questions like that. I mean, you're going, uh, I don't know how the word I can explain it, but what are the differences you've found when you were PT and now to what you're doing now? Yeah, I think like personal training when I was doing it, and it still is, as far as I'm aware, is about aesthetics. Yeah. Um, Majority of the time, yeah, totally. Yeah, and it, it wasn't something that interested me. There wasn't a lot of like thought going behind like coaching and programming, mm -hmm. not to the extent that I have to do it now. Stop like, eating I really bad have food, to, yeah, for a run. <laughs> and it's a lot of psychology, like yeah. in the personal training world, like getting because basically the nutrition needs to be taken care of, and people's motivation to get to the gym and do the work needs to be improved. Totally. Um, whereas right now, like I need to think, like, okay, what do I want these people to do? Why can't these people do it? And I have a class of 20 people, everybody at various levels. So yeah. like, what does that person need? What does that person need? What don't they need? What do they need more of? Yeah. And so I'm juggling all of these things, trying to find out like what people need and, and put them in a map somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, I generally have to map out like um, what's missing from people's practices and from their bodies. Okay. Um, we'll come back to that because yeah. we're gonna take a short break. Okay. But, because I want to, I mean, I, I just, I just seen a whole lot of like roads go <laughs> off this, and I'm yeah. like, how can I just pick one road for now? We'll come back. <laughs> um, guys, yeah, we're talking about movement. If you guys have any comments, questions, please share them in the comment section down below. If you like what you're hearing, smash that like button or subscribe. Uh, but we're coming back shortly after a short break to talk more about movement with Johnny. We've all been there, hours searching the internet asking friend upon friend, making call after call, trying to find the right fitness professional, health specialist, or sports coach. So much time, energy, and even money spent only to find more problems than solutions. Well now, with the Find Fit People platform, you can find all the available professionals with the skills you need in an instant. We've removed all the barriers by establishing a community of many different skilled health specialists sports coaches, and fitness professionals that are alerted immediately once you've posted your request. In under 30 seconds, you can attract multiple professionals with the right skills to help you achieve the result you want. It's simple, fast, and free. Find us online at www.findfitpeople.com or download the Find Fit People app from Apple or Google Play stores so you can find fit people today. Hey guys, my name is Grant Groves and welcome back to Find for People, a platform that helps you find and connect with the best in health, sports and fitness. Uh, we're talking with John Clayton about movement and it's really intriguing and, and I wanted to say off air but we couldn't because the microphones were on. But um, just about, there's so many different roads, bro. there's so many different paths you can take with, with this here and there's, um, I don't know the words I'm looking for, there's so many different things going through my mind I want to talk about and stuff like that. Okay, let, let, let's go, hmm, where does it go? Let's talk about the experience of uh, I think we talk about. I want to be a master at movement. That someone's I'm sure someone's probably come up to you and said that they want to be the best of what they can. Yeah, is there such a thing? I mean, no. Yeah, fan. It's too big a subject for you to be able to master everything. Totally right. Like that's part of the reason why we pursue it because it will last you a lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's too big a subject for you to master anything. There's so much you we can just, do. Yeah, we just try to be general practitioners so we're, yeah. we're decent at a lot of different things yeah and for us decent is at a high level yeah Still, it's, true. It's, it's higher than a normal level I've seen some things but you do bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> like okay so for example like with the strength work when we were heavily involved in strength work mm -hmm. like we put out some basic strength videos and it consisted of doing like one up multiple one arm chin ups and things like that yeah damn which we considered basic mm -hmm. really but, yeah but my teacher's considering it basic to like people that are really strong in that particular field. Yeah. So like if you take something like squatting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our goal is to squat double body weight, which okay, is yeah. Yeah. it's pretty good weight. Yeah. It's hard, it's not. I'm throwing in my own body. <laughs> yeah, and it's not heavier, but I mean. <laughs> most, peop most people, the general public will not achieve like uh, no double ability. body weight squat. But totally. then if you compare them to Olympic lifters, they're lifting like triple body weight. 
So, you know, when we look at ourselves and refer to us as being basic, yeah. it's comparing us to the professionals in that field. Yeah, could be a first good, that's yeah. good point. The, um, okay, okay. Then movement with that. So is, is, is there a... I, don't, I mean, I don't think there is. I'm just going to ask the question anyway. But is, is there a level one as far as movement? Because it's so diverse, there's no real... No, there's no level one. There's no kind of thing. No. It's... Um, f- for the general public, we have um, goals uh, which we think are important for the, for those people to achieve. Mm-hmm. Like So we have like projects that we're working on with the general public yeah. that we think once they achieve those projects and they've completed those projects, mm-hmm. their body will have received the biggest adaption. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like the biggest changes, whether it's neurological, physical. Because mm-hmm. yeah. even a different language, you got, I mean, you're speaking like like a uh, movement itself. I mean, you're t- I mean, you talk about projects to start with, and it's like, you know, other people go like, what, what's a project, you know? Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Especially yeah. when I so used to tr- PT or you know, training game, come along, I want to lose weight, you got a, you got a, a goal to go for, a 12-week goal, for example. Yeah, being I mean, a, like you asked, like a big, the big difference between us and what PT is, is we're providing education. Yeah. And that's, like a, that's a huge push. thing. Yeah, and, and people people are not used to coming into that environment where they have to learn something. Yeah. And that's also a skill in itself. Like, totally. oh, I have to learn. And I had people originally that came and they used to go into like a fitness class after work where they can turn off and shut the brain off. Mm-hmm. And they would come to my class and I'd be like, you got to stop daydreaming. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah, but I come here to switch off. I said, well, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you will never like succeed here. And, and and advance if you keep switching off because totally. here you need to switch on mm-hmm. and you need to listen to the terminology that I'm giving you. Yeah. You need to receive the terminology here. It needs to go into the body. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to understand what I'm asking of you and yeah. then watching, like even demonstrating things, like what to look for in a demonstration. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and the other big thing, we have a lot of play involved in uh, the practice. Mm-hmm. And it's a big thing that's missing in the fitness industry is just general play. Yeah. Like you mean in you sports, get you get it. Like if you're playing a competitive, like rugby or something like that, you're yeah. going to play with somebody else. Totally. But in the fitness industry, there's no games happening. And, and we're playing, but we're playing on a serious level. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, to have a good experience in play, you also have to rely on a good partner as well. Yeah, totally. And learning how to be a good partner to support the other person yeah. and the rest of the group because you're all going to grow together mm-hmm. if you're all like i was about to say that w- when it comes to and you talk about these projects i mean because it is so intricate and you, you have to learn it and stuff like that i mean i mean for me i mean i imagine it'd be quite hard even one-to-one would be quite hard but as, as a group and a uh, setting i mean that's what i imagine you, you yeah, do right yeah, yeah, yeah totally how much harder is it it maybe it's from a, let's go both sides because there's two sides the teaching side to try and teach so many different things is it more engaging is it harder it's, to is it just as opposed to one-on-one yeah yeah um they both offer their pros and cons, mm-hmm. but I don't think one's more difficult than the other. The good thing about uh, working in a group with more people yeah. is that you get to have a slightly different experience with each person. Yeah, and totally, each yeah. person's going to offer you something different, whereas mm-hmm. if it's just one-on-one, yeah. whatever I'm comfortable doing, I will do, and whatever you're comfortable doing, you will do. Mm-hmm. And it's up to you to put me into my area of discomfort and yeah. vice versa. Totally. And just working with somebody else, you'll naturally start to dive into those areas of discomfort and that's yeah, where yeah. your development's going to happen isn't it because totally. you naturally fall back into where you're comfortable oh, really? oh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. so i want to i want to like expose myself and my my uh, students to as many different people to work with as possible so that they're receiving different information 100 totally yeah. uh, and, uh, and and also like you you're also uh dealing with people of different different sizes so you mm-hmm. have different torso lengths mm-hmm. different limb lengths mm-hmm. and that can alter uh games and how you play them as well yeah man with great question there where from a pt and the education times is that and then going into movement obviously your education always develops anyway it doesn't matter who you are but still it must have just i mean that much more you must have learned or the intricacies intricacies i suppose yeah. they're looking for i mean the my minute. learning in the movement practice skyrocketed yeah, yeah even even uh, uh from a strength perspective side, which is what was more familiar to me from personal training mm-hmm. through the movement practice yeah. and teaching people to do one arm chin ups and things like that uh, and playing on the Make rings. Make feel weak. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Learning how to get people to advance on the rings. Like I have a, at the moment, I have a class of, it's about 50-50, mm-hmm. uh, girls and boys. And wow, cool. the, the girls are doing more work on the rings than the boys. 
But it's Why? learning. Is it because they're lighter, or just because it's they pick up things more technically, they, or there's they some of them have been with me for longer. Okay. Uh, some of them are more mobile. Some yeah. of them are actually physically stronger um, oh. than the guys. Um, so, yeah. But just learning how to get the girls into that place, uh -huh. and even the guys, I had to learn about progressing people in the right way, so mm -hmm. programming, volume, sets, reps. Everyone's different too as well, aren't they? Yeah, and, and, and um, managing all of that. Yeah. Um, it was a lot more difficult in, in the, the movement practice than it was in personal training. Mm. Where in personal training, you're generally on machines. Do a bicycle, uh, everyone's on yeah. a bicycle, do a pull up. It's, it's like trying to teach dance. There's a different movement, a different way, a different expression, a different exactly, thing yeah. going on. Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll do a bicep curl to warm our elbows up for something. Okay, yeah. You know, like some 30 pound dumbbell curls just to warm the joints up. And yeah, that's it. That's if we do them at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, my education through that, through the, through the movement practice, like skyrocketed. Mm. He was such a knowledgeable guy, like he's on another level. Well, let's go, let's go to that because, I mean, yeah, where, where did this come from as far as, it, did it, well, I mean, I kind of, well, I don't really understand to be honest, where it came from and how he started into this. Because he's, no, he's known as the guy of, the, of movement guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he is. So, so, I mean, like in a nutshell, his background was he reached a high level of capoeira mm -hmm. and... Um, there wasn't kind of anywhere to go beyond that. And mm -hmm. he realized it wasn't capoeira that he was interested in, it was the movement. Mm. Um, and he went out and searched for movement teachers and couldn't find anybody. Oh, so he realized yeah. he had to be that guy. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of how the whole thing started. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and from there, space. like the practice really changed. Like it was heavily uh, centered around like strength work with the gymnastics background, getting the body strong enough to do all of the work. And this is what most of us saw on social media. Then there was this locomotion thing, which was moving on all fours, like fairly close to the floor. Mm -hmm. um, and and the hand balance. So it's been the dance move, the locomotion. I think yeah. it's about it for a Okay, sorry. Um, and then you have the hand balancing type stuff. Yeah. Um, so those were kind of like the things that were the scene really early on on, on YouTube. And then mm -hmm. from there, it kind of unraveled itself. Ido decided, like, you know, we have uh, there's a thousand people doing online coaching. Yeah. Or something like that. So through Be there, trained. you get a lot of information back in terms of what's working, what's not working, yep. and what more people need. So that was a good research platform for mm. him as well to kind of uh, direct the the path of the the practice yeah, for cool. himself. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how he got it's into still it. Still developing. I mean, was still it? developing. Yeah. He's like light years ahead of us. Yeah. Um, in what ways? What when you say light years ahead? I mean, so like we have our own projects to work on. Yeah. And. The projects can sometimes like th I've been working on some projects for like two years. Oh, first and geez. he's like, Got however it. many projects ahead of me, and yeah. I don't even know what he's doing right now. Do they get fed back down? Yeah, the they line? get yeah. fed back yeah, down, cool. and we have to like work on them, and we're expected to complete them as well. Yeah, it's not cool. just like yeah, here's something. Start working on it. See yeah. if you can do it. It's like no, stay on it and get it done. Totally. Isn't with it? my students, with my students, it's different because a lot of people have a nine to five job, so we yeah. kind of like we we work on something. Mm something simple like juggling mm -hmm. and within the six weeks some people will advance on it uh, and complete it and some people won't yeah totally. like we have specific juggling tasks yeah, cool. to work on uh, and then eventually we'll circle back around and we'll come back to the juggling yeah and by the time we come back to the juggling the guys would have worked on a number of object manipulation projects and their knowledge and totally. timing and rhythm and all Can't that kind of stuff, and stuff is already improved so when yeah. we come back to the juggling they get a little bit further. Yeah, and totally. so with the guys in the group, we'll keep recircling back. But with us, it's like, no, you get it and you continue to work on it until you've got it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm practicing about six to eight hours a day. I was about to ask you He's that. He's doing about 10 to 12 wow, hours jeepers. a day. Uh, no days off. Chur. No days off. Although not a bad way to live, be active with all day, no, but it's awesome. Great. Yeah, awesome. I mean, like people get confused. Like when we say we're training all day, they think like we're in the gym training all day. But it's not. Stop that's thinking why that. We, <laughs> yeah. it's not, it's not. That's why we refer to it as a practice as well. Yeah. It's not like we're training. Like, I can spend an hour in the park. Oh, how many people are actually training sometimes in the gym? Anyway? I'm there for two hours oh, while you get on. <laughs> Just checking. Stop looking in the mirror. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, totally. Selfie time. Yeah. <laughs> for the cream. But yeah, I could be in the park learning to kick a ball on my foot, like juggling the football or bouncing a ball on my head, mm -hmm. playing with sticks, doing a little bit of tactical work like boxing with somebody. Mm -hmm maybe one hour of strength work in the day or 40 minutes of strength work in the day mm -hmm. twice a week uh, mm -hmm. and the rest of it's working on various projects rolling around like working on various roles acrobatics yeah. and things like that so it's not like six hours in the gym on a cross trainer like no. on the hamster wheel just going around and around and around it's funny you say that because like this sometimes it's well you look some fitness is fundamentals like people want to be they want to be strong uh, str strong supple um have some mobility and have some cardiovascular is there a thing for movement no because no. it depends on the scenario. Yeah. You know, like you could 
you could be there's no fundamentals I think, yeah there's no fun i mean we want everybody to reach some basic level of strength mm -hmm. and mobility yeah yeah so there is like some basic level that it needs to be achieved but it's not it's not consistent across all the subjects that we're working on because you could be like super strong in a linear lift yeah but then when the lift is more organic and it's not and it's not in that linear line like Maybe no, you, you don't do. have the strength. Yeah, like totally. picking up a body, a, 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 a limp body mm -hmm. is totally different than like, like you can, or If yeah. I lie on the floor and I completely relax, huh. I'm 60 kilos. Yeah. You can maybe deadlift 120. <laughs> but struggle to pick you up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, you'd struggle not be able to pick just, up. Yeah, you'd yeah. really struggle to pick me up off the floor. So it's totally. like, okay, you have all this linear strength on this deadlift, but you totally. can't even pick me up off the floor and I'm half the weight. Exactly, yeah. Um, so fascinating, eh? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm actually forgot it because <laughs> we're, we're coming to the time, end, of the, end of the show, but um, bro, we're, we're gonna have you back on either okay. way you look at it. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk more and more and deeper and look at the different roads. Um, but for this one here, uh, kind of, I don't want to say a summary because it's not a summary, but just kind of maybe a couple of key points that people can just take away on um, how to maybe explore the, the, the idea of movement. I mean, obviously, getting in touch mm. with you is one way. We'll put your details down below so people can get in touch with you and actually comment stuff like that as well. But yeah, some kind of a takeaway that someone could do is like, look, I want to learn more about movement or where do I start? Yeah, I mean, like, projects the best or? way to learn is like through us in person and yeah. through our education that we're providing, whether it's with myself or with my teacher, Rita Portal, mm -hmm. like getting to one of his events. That's the best way to learn. Yeah. But outside of that, if someone just wants to get started, mm -hmm. like I said at the beginning, most people aren't doing enough of the basics, walking, <laughs> squatting, yeah. hanging. Yeah. Like just those simple things people can do every day. Like, and it doesn't like we encourage people to try and sit in a squat for 30 minutes every day for 30 minutes and you'll receive some huge benefits. It doesn't mm. have to be done all at once, but if you accumulate it throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with the hanging, like just try and accumulate seven minutes of hanging and you can do these things anywhere. And the last thing is walking because walking is like a huge uh, factor in coordination. Yeah, totally. You know, it's like it's a coordination project. And most people are not even walking enough because you just get in the car, go to work, get out, maybe sit, down sit at the office, desk all yeah, day. Totally. And so, yeah, just to get to the beach, like in Dubai, we don't have many places to walk, but now we have this nice, like, long stretch on the beach. Just go and walk, mm. like, like 10 kilometers if you can a day. I try to walk 10 kilometers every day as well as Working. six hours of practice a day. Wow, Jesus. So those are the basic things that I recommend. And then... Yeah, I've got my, my people can contact me through my website, which is movement check out your details. What is it? <laughs> movementpracticedxb.com. Yeah. And I've got my Instagram page, which is Johnny Clayton, uh, J O N Y, mm -hmm. uh, C L A Y T O N 13. Um, yeah, and then Nido Portal, my teacher. Just run mm -hmm. it in through YouTube yeah. or Google and you'll find it. Totally. Him. Rip yeah. it out. Also, for the um, guys, there was, there was only an introduction <laughs> to me. It wasn't even <laughs> it's a deep part of it. But um, yeah, so we're going to talk more and you can find out more from uh, Johnny on his, uh, social media or through the website. I think get involved, find out a bit more. I mean, it's definitely, you can see the, um, off the bat, there's a, there's a lot more. Um, <laughs> without insulting anyone else, <laughs> a lot more substance behind it, if you ask me, anyway. <laughs> So, um, anything. Yeah. <laughs> guys, um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for listening. If you like what you hear, hit that like button, subscribe for more like this. It is the channel that helps you find and connect with the best in sports, health, sports, and fitness. Uh, my name is Grant Goes. Until next time, guys, we will see you soon. Peace out. We've all been there, hours searching the internet. Asking friend upon friend, making call after call, awesome. trying to find the right fitness professional, health specialist, or sports coach. So much time, energy, and even money spent only to find more problems than solutions. Well now, with the Find Fit People platform, you can find all the available professionals with the skills you need in an instant. We've removed all the barriers by establishing a community of many different skilled health specialists sports coaches, and fitness professionals that are alerted immediately once you've posted your request. In under 30 seconds, you can attract multiple professionals with the right skills to help you achieve the result you want. It's simple, fast, and free. Find us online at www.findfitpeople.com or download the Find Fit People app from Apple or Google Play stores so you can find fit people today.